my speed of light. Uh, one of the things that has become very present to many of us who are in the technology space is really the challenges that we're going to have around energy consumption and other sustainability concerns, especially as AI has, or generative AI more specifically, has really captivated everyone's uh, imagination. And so what I wanted to talk today was about some of the alternatives that we have been advancing here at NTT together with an ecosystem of partners as to alternative means of computing. And I, I'm a former NVIDIA person. I was at NVIDIA for a few years. And so having been in the world of deep computing, I am very familiar with the high intensity of energy consumption and heat that's generated from computing. And of course, there's been a lot of innovation that's been happening in that regards. But as we move forward, the question is, OK, how do we create, which many of us do today through computing uh, technology and and, uh, and, and systems, and how do we consume? Because we are creating, consuming constantly. And thanks to COVID, there's been the digitization of assets and the digitalization of processes. And this has been accelerated. And in some ways, perhaps the horizon even hasn't been seen yet as it relates to how this is all going to play out with artificial intelligence and the way that that's gonna be embedded into the world around us. So. I wanted to talk today about how do we address those concerns? What are we doing at NTT to innovate around this? And what does light have to do with it? So before I go to the technology side, I do want to talk about the sustainability imperative. Uh, sustainability is, is, a, is a very important topic for me personally, as I know it is for many of you. In fact, I spent a couple of years researching the role that the pandemic and uh, digital innovation played in really helping to advance and make sustainability imperatives more mainstream, particularly in industry and in business. And I even, I even wrote a book about it, uh, which, which uh, if you like, you can ping me later to find out more about the book. But what I wanted to talk here about today, of course, is the whole point about how sustainability has become top of mind across all generations and across businesses. You see more and more around the UN uh, 17 SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals. You see more and more around ESG. You see more and more around some of the uh, sustainability uh, requirements that are being put forward by policy and also the sustainability commitments that industries have made in light of the fact that resources on Earth are have always been quantified and not limitless. And so how do we continue to grow communities and how does a growing population really make sure that the future generations have a place to live here on earth. And so the three areas that we're looking at NTT is really uh, around prosperity and really enabling businesses and societies to can you continue advancing and being able to meet some of these requirements. So of course there's the sustainable business imperatives and, and the uh, goals that businesses have set for themselves also around how they're gonna be able to manage around compliance and privacy, which is an important part of sustainability and the UN SDGs. And so prosperity positive is really about the economy and making sure businesses can thrive in the, in the future forward. And then planet positive is of course, being able to lead by example and being able to have our own commitments around net zero and being able to promote biodiversity, circularity, regenerative economies, um, energy, water, and food. And this is really about preserving the scarce, the increasingly scarce resources that we have here on earth and the, the role that that plays in orchestrating for businesses and industries as we continue to grow as a global economy. And then people positive. And this is something that is very important to us here at NTT Data, where we are wanting to make sure that our, our people, our employees, our teams, our colleagues are engaged and also that we are we realize that we're part of a much bigger ecosystem of communities and so everything from DEI and human rights education health and well-being participation and poverty uh, I was working with the Americas team at NTT Data last year, for example, around making sure that we were able to engage and involve our folks around volunteering efforts. Uh, we broke records in 2023 um, for, compared to prior years around how much our people were really excited to bring their energy and their skills to different communities that might have been in need or to rally around clean uh, the, the cleanup day, uh, Earth Day, which, by the way, Earth Day was just 
couple of days ago. So happy Earth Day to everybody. And it's uh, really important for those three Ps, as it's been known in, in the academic world around people, planet, and profit. Our, our rendition of that is around uh, prosperity, planet, and people. And so for us, we are fully committed here at NTT around being able to holistically think about sustainability and st sustainable outcomes. And ultimately what that means is how do we, as one of the world's leading technology solutions providers and managed services providers, how do we meaningfully do that, leveraging IT and technology to do that? And so for us, it's really around two major pillars. It's around sustainable, sustainable by design. So really thinking about the various solutions that we have been bringing forward and ensuring that at the very core, that applications, thinking about the workforce and connected infrastructure that as much as we can, a lot of that is going to be sustainable by design. So that's just fundamental part of the DNA as how we think about solutioning so we can embed that into the solutions for our clients and help them achieve their sustainability ambitions. And it's also around sustainability consulting and tech services. So there's uh, um, IT for uh, green for IT and IT for green. So in what ways can we use technology and, and the various innovations that are coming forward in emerging tech to address challenges that we are increasingly facing around climate and nature, around corporate sustainability, around the, the, the value chain uh, and IT generally in terms of traditional IT. And smart and sustainability is really thinking about how we can take advantage of the fact that assets that are more and more digitized and processes are digitalized and being able to leverage all of the, that, that, that orchestration and that digital mesh to be able to break through in new ways that technology and IT is gonna be able to help quantify, help be able to measure, report, improve all of the different things that need to happen as a global society and community and as businesses to be able to bring that forward. And so for us, we are, we are doubling down, tripling down, we're putting more uh, focus around how we help industry and, and organizations leverage a lot of this IT and emerging technologies for their comprehensive sustainability strategy. And uh, there is no, the, there is there is definitely no shortage of the kinds of technologies and the assets that we have at our disposal to make all of that happen. Many of you have already across this, maybe you're immersed in these worlds around digital twins or private 5G or the metaverse. I know metaverse was a big, big topic during the pandemic. It's waned a bit, but it, it is definitely still speaks to the world that is that is digitalized and how do we leverage that. IoT and edge analytics has been a big part of how we've been helping uh, public utilities be able to achieve their sustainability goals for the public-private partnerships that they're stewards for. And of course, digital linguistics and LLM being able to bridge the digital divide. There's, there's a whole host of different permutations that brought together, we can really think about how are these technologies going to help achieve sustainable outcomes. And we have plenty of examples of how we have been doing this. This is just a, a small snapshot of some of the th ways that we've been delivering this and the ways that industry and clients have been taking advantage of some of these emerging technologies. I'll talk more about ION here in a moment. Um, ION is specifically addressing, in large part, the increased demand for compute and data. And, uh, and we'll talk more about that in a moment. So just to flash to some of the other areas before we come back to ION, we have been working here at NTT around biological conversion technology. So using the natural ability for algae to absorb CO2 and being able to use technologies to accelerate and amplify that capability that exists in nature and also uh, wind power development. So alternative forms of energy, which has also become increasingly popular from solar, pa solar panels to wind farms and more, and of course there's more, uh, a lot more work going into nuclear power as well, micronuclear. Artificial photosynthesis, uh, this photosynthesis is nature's way of being able to recycle some of the oxygen and the carbon, and that's something that we've been looking to emulate and imitate artificially. And then of course we have a city that is called E-City Labo. It's in uh, outside on the outskirts of Tokyo, and this is a whole environment and an ecosystem where we are demonstrating how there are various components and parts of how we thrive as a community and as a city and how to do that in the utmost sustainable way possible. 
And then food waste recycling, uh, food security, food insecurity is go only going to become more and more important of how we address that, especially for different parts of the world that are significantly affected by climate change. And so really being able to be smarter about the whole life cycle of food is something that we're working on as well. And within our R&D team, uh, we spend at NTT, we spend about $3.4 billion annually on R&D. And so a large part of that R&D is really looking at that intersection of technology and solving for some of the world's greatest sustainability challenges at the macro level. And then on the micro level, really being able to hone in on some of the needs that our clients have and being able to apply that forward. And some of this work is also being manifested from a pragmatic way of, OK, what does how does this all yield results for me in our uh, innovation centers, which we have over 10 in different parts of the world? So let me talk about ION. Uh, ION stands for Innovative Optical and Wireless Network. And so now you're going to see what where the speed of light reference is going to be coming from. Um, just to give the context on ION around why optical and what is innovative about this, we just need to understand again, there's a voracious appetite for speed and throughput as more and more things and people become connected, internet of everything effectively. And so any everything from autonomous driving to robots and drones to mixed reality. Of course, the teleconferencing is not the teleconferencing of old now with Teams and how I'm able to connect with all of you through StreamYard and other applications. It's really about that high throughput of video streaming. Uh, for people to be able to connect, but video streaming also for how we consume content. And so through, I'm sure many of you are on Netflix or Hulu or a whole host of other channels by which we are consuming data and video today. And of course, high capacity storage. And sorry, I'm, I'm, I uh, was on a very long flight yesterday, so I'm a bit dehydrated today. So high capacity storage, and uh, the uh, ability to also be able to provide the high performance uh, computing, which is increasingly demanded from uh, industry and from businesses, from uh, technology solution providers like, like NTT. And so there's this high throughput of data, and there's also this increasing demand for low latency right here, right now. And certainly that lag has to do with the quality of service and continuing to be able to deliver on that. Now, this has meant that there's a, an immense and growing demand on data center uh, capability or data center services. And so this is just one snapshot of data. There's a whole host of data that tells the same story, astronomical rise in data volume that is going to be consumed. And that means also commensurate rise in power consumption because all of this computing, all this connectivity means that there is a great greater amount of energy that's needed to be able to deliver to this kind of demand. And so what we at NTT have been working on around this con concept of innovative optical and wireless network is to use optical networking versus electronic uh, networking wiring. And why optics or photonic? Uh, you'll also hear the term photonic used in this, in this reference. And photon is a quantum particle of light and therefore the, the speed of light reference. Uh, so one of the things that we're focusing on as a as a technology solutions provider and working with our ecosystem of technology partners is to think about how do we shift, have a fundamental paradigm shift in the technology connectivity computing landscape from electrical to optical. And the idea with that is to be able to, if we can move to that paradigm shift of moving to optical computing and optical networking, we can enable that higher capacity, higher quality, lower power consumption, and low latency because optical uh, connectivity, as you saw from the chart before, is a fraction of the energy that's consumed from electrical. So if we can move to this and enable those use cases that I just mentioned earlier, then we can effectively enable that next paradigm shift of how we're gonna be able to have this ecosystem where you have everything from the relay devices to the transmission between the devices, to the switching, to the computing. And now we're talking about being able to connect uh, compute nodes for, uh, over wide, large distances, which you'll see in a moment, that is where we're moving across multiple generation from where we are ION 1.0, we're around ION 2.0 right now, and hoping to get to ION 4.0 over the next few years. And again, this is done in collaboration 
with a number of our partners in the ecosystem. We have something called the Ion Global Forum, where we are bringing together various partners because we are one part of the machinery. There's a number of other uh, vectors that come into this that are provided by some of our partners to be able to make this all happen. Eventually, what we hope that this does, and we've already experimented on this through the first phase of connecting data centers, is that we can now enable data centers to exist more in clusters that are uh, that don't have to be in, in proximity or in, in places for the connectivity because we can distribute these nodes of, of the data centers more, more widely and in areas where perhaps it's the demand for power is going to have less constraints and less tax on the existing ecosystem or the, excuse me, the, the existing grid, because some of you might have come across and some of you live in countries where there's rolling blackouts to be able to manage the energy supply for just daily life, let alone compute needs. And so how do we leverage ION to be able to have this connectivity happen because of the higher throughput, lower latency and connectivity that we can enable. And eventually the idea is that once we get to data centers that can be connected through an all photonic network is to be able to embed that photonic connectivity at the chip level. Uh, that's going to take some time and again in collaboration with our partners in the ecosystem, but that's the idea. So I do want to leave a couple minutes for any Q&A, uh, but in the meantime, I just uh, wanted to wrap this up by saying that in many ways, when we think about where we started with all of this from human intelligence, humans having been around, depending on which data set you look at, but tens of thousands of years, and being able to evolve into these intelligent beings who we are that is able to create this compute ecosystem that enables so much more in terms of how we create and consume in our lives and to be the arbiters of artificial intelligence, but in, in many ways, and this is something that I've been thinking about and, and have over, or over dinner discussions is that the artificial intelligence piece isn't really artificial because it comes from things that comes from organic matter. So whether that's from our own brains or from materials that we that comes out of the earth and we've refashioned it in a way. And so we have an acute responsibility to figure out how we bring that innovation forward in a way that's gonna be sustainable. And in some ways going to an all photonic network is leveraging the energy and the capabilities that exists in nature today. And so that in many ways is a convergence of intelligence in a way that's a, it's a, an almost organic intelligence that we can bring forward and take advantage of. So I hope that explains now the uh, speed of light reference that I was talking about and about how you can look forward to a future uh, with this push that's being that's being driven from NTT and from our uh, from our ION Global Forum partners of how we're going to be able to 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 drive innovation for you to create and consume at the speed of light.